and I have the pleasure of welcoming you to our webinar on the OER uh, for the OER Dynamic Coalition on ICTs and the ICT Competency Framework for Teachers OER project and it's linked to the UNESCO OER recommendation. I'm going to start with an introduction. Uh, we have four speakers today, so we're a bit, it's going to be a very tight uh, schedule, but uh, I will be, uh, I think we're going to have um, a very interesting discussion. So I will start the slide. At the end of the discussion, we're going to be having the, um, having a, a uh, question and answer period. Um, so the discussion is about a UNESCO project on the ICT competency framework for teachers and it's linked to the OER recommendation. The objectives are to first of all to introduce you to this project which is linked to a framework of UNESCO for teacher training and to see how it look uh, the uh, how it contributes to the implementation of the recommendation and perhaps I'll see which areas you may want to be involved with after the discussion. Um, first of all, what is the recommendation? As you know, the UNESCO OER recommendation was adopted in 2019. It is the only uh, recommendation uh, normative instrument at the UN level which addresses um, which addresses openly licensed learning materials and open licensing in itself. And it uh, it looks at open educational resources. And there are Four, there are five areas in this recommendation. The first one, the first area is about the capacity to create, access, use, adapt, and redistribute OER. The second one looks at policy. The third one at inclusive, equitable access to quality OER. Sustain and the fourth to sustainability models. There is a fifth session part, which is not uh, on the slide, but it's about international cooperation. And I think that's how it um, is going to be one of the key axes of our discussion. In March, 2020, we UNESCO uh, launched a dynamic coalition, which was a mechanism for leveraging the international collaboration, which responds to the last level of the recommendation. And it talked about communities of practice and establishing and, out and identifying partnerships and mechanisms for resource mobilization to promote OER efforts. Now the ICTCFT network is actually a community of practice, practice of, of uh, uh, colleagues who are working in teacher training for the use of technologies. Um, some examples of this kind of work, of course, is some of the examples we'll be looking at today, We're looking at the support of regional capacity building, translation of capacity building tools, which you'll see through this discussion is one of the key aspects of this network, leveraging synergies for international initiatives and fostering communication between and about OER initiatives, which is one of the objectives of today's work. So what is the ICT competency framework for teachers? Well, it's about a framework to identify scope. So we have a framework, it's the ICT competency framework for teachers. It's about free quality adaptable resources. So I, uh, open educational resources and a network of, of uh, colleagues, a network of experience and expertise. So we have the ICT competency framework for teachers, which is here. This is a framework that UNESCO has been uh, working on since 2008. And it's the third iteration of this document. And it basically outlines areas in which uh, teacher trainers can develop teacher training materials on ICT, use of ICTs. And it is the only uh, internationally recognized framework that has been used in this area. I think um, it is, it's, uh, that's its, uh, its particularity. The resources is, relates to, um, to a portal that's been developed by UNESCO and its part partners, which will be, which will be uh, presented to you during these discussions. Mm -hmm. And the network of experiences, the group, a community of practice that's built around this portal that puts into place the work of this uh, of this um, framework. This is the portal. I think I just show it to you. These are the areas of practice. These are the levels of the difficulty of the work. And this will shows you very quickly the different partners. Uh, just a screenshot of some of the partners that are on this uh, in this project. Uh, the presenters 
Today, I'm sorry, the presenters today will provide you more overview. Our first presenter is Mr. Andrew Moore. He is an expert from OER Africa, and he's going to give you an overview of the ICT OER project and some concrete examples. Mr. Vincent Nierga of the Rwanda Board of Education is going to go through the example of Rwanda. Ms. Melinda Bandeleria is a chancellor at the Univers Open University of, um, of the Philippines. And she will be going through the different actions and how they link to the UNESCO OER recommendation. And finally, Melinda Boland uh, from ISCME will give you a presentation of the portal, which I just showed you. Now I'm speaking very fast because we don't have that much time and we have a lot of inputs. So with that, I give the floor to Andrew Moore. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, yes, my name's Andrew Moore. Um, I work for a little consultancy, Neil Butcher and Associates. We're based in Johannesburg in South Africa, but we're very fortunate in the sense that we've been working with UNESCO for many years now to try and encourage people to adopt well, ministries of education and universities, et cetera, to adopt the ICT CFT as a framework in order to identify what are the competencies teachers should aspire to. And then we've been very fortunate in the sense that we've been um, at the sharp end as well. We've been helping uh, developers put together materials, etc., uh, to to train educators so that they do acquire these various competencies. So yes, this is our uh, our key text. So um, we would encourage you guys, if you're interested in, in guiding your educators uh, to incorporate ICT effectively into their teaching and learning and other education duties, then this is the text to make sure you get hold of this. All right. Um, I'm going to just uh, go in a little bit deeper than Zainab has in terms of what we've done, what is available and what expertise is out there uh, to help you move uh, and uh, become effective in this area. So I'm going to share my screen. So the um, what's nice is that you saw the key text, but there, are, there have been people down this road already. There is a lot of expertise uh, and people uh, who have implemented various components of the ICT CFT, and they have released their materials um, as open educational resources, which means you can take that and actually adapt them uh, to get up to speed quickly for your particular context. And the third item on the screen is, as Zainab has pointed out, there's even a little community of people who have been involved who are willing to guide and help you along this particular route. So we want to kind of um, introduce these three elements to you. So what is the history and what is actually out there in terms of available resources? So uh, the granddaddy going right back to 2012 was a, um, a teacher education course, a teacher training course on how to integrate ICT into the teaching and learning. It uh, was done um, through um, the Ministry of Science and Education uh, uh, in Guyana and the Kenyans uh, Ministry of Science uh, you get that right. It's right. The Ministry of Education, Science and Technology picked up various components and then added extra value on top of that. Uh, and they could do that because it was the original piece of work was licensed openly. Um, Rwanda took various components and decided to add a, additional pieces onto this work. Djibouti took it and uh, adapted it for universities, all, this, all these training ma uh, materials. They also translated it into French. And as a consequence, uh, the university in Lomé, they also took it and um, uh, extended it further. Um, and at that point, um, UNESCO approached OER Commons and ISCME and asked them to actually develop a little repository where we could start putting all these different variations into, the, uh, into a database. And so a hub was set up on OER Commons where all of the materials that had already been developed and everything that happened subsequently is now available in this little database. Um, the South Africans took it. They wanted to do more with the ICT CFT. They wanted to have a higher level. We call it knowledge creation. The ICT CFT is divided into three different levels and the South Africans added a whole load of extra materials at the knowledge creation level. Uh, the Zimbabweans took it. They were quite interesting in the sense that they wanted a paper-based version, but they also developed a version for um, 
uh, the Google Play Store. So you can run it on your particular uh, smartphone. Um, so there's a version of that available too. Um, the uh, a, an Arabic version was created uh, by the American University in Cairo. So uh, and that was the first shot at an Arabic version. And then Mozambique took components from the hub and actually developed a, a number of units of study in Portuguese. Um, and then Alexa has come to the party as well, and they've coordinated their Tunisian uh, colleagues to develop another version uh, in Arabic. It's quite different from the Egyptian one. And um, just lately, um, uh, UNESCO itself has decided that, that we now have so many versions of the ICT CFT study materials that we probably need a generic version. And so just recently, we've been uh, developing a, uh, a generic version where we've been stripping out country specific issues so that other countries can pick it up and then quickly adapt it rather than have um, seriously reworking the materials. So for example, on the screen, um, this particular one has the added functionality that you can um, link Moodle's competency framework directly to the UNESCO ICT CFT. So you can say this particular unit of study is linked to this competency. And then you can build learning pathways in your Moodle learner management system so that it can be uh, uh, linked directly to these competencies. And then teachers can have a portfolio of evidence that they have completed these various skills. So that's all um, very exciting. Um, so what we're trying to say is that there is a lot of um, existing open educational resource content. And these aren't just little nuggets. These are whole units of study that are available for adaptation for new country contexts or new educational contexts. So again, on the screen, as Zainab pointed out right at the beginning, there are three components to the recipe. Make sure you've identified what particular competencies you think are important using the uh, version three framework, the latest version. Go and have a look what's available um, using the uh, hub to see that so you don't have to start from scratch, that you can take the bits and pieces that uh, are talking directly to what you need. And then we've got our network of experienced practitioners from all around the world. And we're gonna hear from a few of them in a moment. Um, and they are there to help and guide and look for new resources if we found gaps, et cetera, et cetera. All right, I think I've done my, my little 10 minutes. Um, I'll just very quickly show you the hub. All right. This is the hub. Can you still see the screen? Are you seeing a PowerPoint presentation or are you actually seeing a, 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 um, a website? And there was one slide which was very interesting on Zainab's thing, but she went very quickly. Um, all of the various competencies are organized and linked to resources. So you can see here, if you're interested in, for example, um, uh, complex problem solving as a pedagogy issue. Can educators actually demonstrate the use of ICTs to achieve that uh, end? Uh, all of the resources are clustered here. There are uh, uh, 29 available at the moment. So you can zero in on the specific competency that you are interested in. Uh, again, here are the various, we've clustered the contributions from the various countries and organizations into little groups. So here's some of them. And um, we've got a whole load of uh, coming on. Nigeria has shown interest. Uh, we've also got um, oh, a couple of other countries are also keen to uh, get involved. So you won't be alone on this journey. Uh, you can uh, grow and develop with a number of other people as well. We've got the hub to um, be a little place where we can all come together and um, discuss issues. But I'm going to leave that for Melinda. She's going to take us into a little bit more detail in a moment. So thank you very much from me. I've, that said, it was very quick and very fast, but I'm hoping now you understand that there's a lot of practical opportunities uh, out there, materials, expertise, the framework, etc. And we would encourage you to become part of the family. Okay, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to uh, to say thank you for inviting me to to, uh, to participate in this uh, OYWA uh, network. Uh, Rwanda is um, 
part of, it's also a member of the UNESCO. So we are lucky to, to have our um, a teacher training uh, program aligned to UNESCO ICT competency framework for teachers. So um, uh, what I can say is that um, we, we have done two documents. I don't, you can go down the slide. So, so far we have um, adapted two documents. One was ICT Essentials for Teachers course. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Yes, <laughs> just move the slide. Yeah, so uh, we, we have done two uh, contextualization. Two, uh, one is for ICT Essentials, uh, which was uh, uh, basically on uh, on the technology literacy level, which was really um, aligned. It was developed based on UNESCO ICT safety. So this course was um, actually done in 20, from 2014. That's when we started the journey of constructualization. And uh, it was piloted successfully in 2017, 18, and uh, into like uh, 150 uh, schools where really uh, where we we piloted this course, so we, we have seen a lot of changes in terms of teacher training, and uh, we are very happy that even the the part of the OERs that were developed and integrated into this uh, uh, ICT essentials for teachers course, really we have seen how it has even helped the teachers to to continue um, the training. So far, uh, right now, the course has been scaled up to um, around 750 schools, uh, which are supported by the government with uh, the infrastructure. And um, we have seen how it has really improved uh, teachers' skills into uh, integrating ICT in teaching and learning. So we are very happy uh, because of this course. And then, so through this, uh, we have seen different transformation. And then, so uh, after we have realized that the teachers really, uh, they, they wanted more advanced uh, one. So that's when we started the journey of uh, um, developing a, a bit more advanced uh, of ICT essentials, so which was actually the progression of the ICT essentials. So this one was more really to provide more in-depth uh, teacher training, and um, uh, but we currently we haven't um, piloted the course, but we believe um, in the next few months uh, we have seen we have. Um, a support from the UNESCO um, regional office for East Af African, so which which is going to help us to pilot the course at the moment, uh, and uh, we it has resources. The course has been developed and uh, validated, of course, by UNESCO and other local uh, institutions like the Ministry of Education um, and other partners, uh, with the higher learning institution that were also involved in developing this um, ICT uh, advanced level. So which normally focuses on knowledge uh, creation and knowledge uh, deepening. So we have come up with different units, which, are, which we saw that are really suit the, the ICT in education policy. So because uh, it, it had to undergo through um, different adaptation to our local context. So we have seen that process has gone through that uh, process. Uh, um, and uh, we have also seen uh, kind some expertise from the UNESCO because uh, we worked with Andrew Moore and uh, Zainab, the Neyako. So they help us to come up with these uh, really documents that have really helped us to come up with um, with the best teacher training program. So for in-service teachers. So we are really very happy. We are the man, the, the East African country that uh, has really adapted the UNESCO um, ICT CFT version three. So we have already developed as like, as I said, we, we have now a curriculum which was validated in 2019 in, in February, the, the curriculum was uh, uh, validated uh, so we, we are hoping that uh, in coming days, we'll be able to, to roll out the program uh, in, in 700 schools, like as I said, because this was also a progression from the, the ICT um, uh, literacy level, the, the technology literacy level, so the best one. 
So we we are we we are looking um, also on how um, uh, because it is a combination. We, we have have we have some OUAs that have been really developed and integrated into our ICT um, advanced level because these are like the resources we have the the local resources which were developed, but also we have the international resources that also have been developed and integrated into um, advanced ICT centers. So we are very happy uh, that um, uh, the work of UNESCO, it has really supported this, the process of um, contextualization. And uh, we are still also working with UNESCO on how to create these uh, digital materials that we hope also in the, in the, in the, in the coming training will, will play a big part in, in terms of ICT utilization and also in terms of um, making sure that these resources, uh, digital resources that has been identified uh, from the UNESCO ICT hub. So because there are some uh, uh, digital resources that we, we have uh, come up from the, the hub and also integrated into this training program. Uh, so we hope that our teachers will be, will have the capacity and also to continue um, integrating ICT into their teaching and learning practices. So uh, without taking much of the time, uh, this is a, the, the, the snapshot. So where we have on my, my left, these are kind of the units that have been identified. Then we have also the competences which were um, uh, selected from the UNESCO ICT CFT. So these are the competences that actually were uh, uh, drawn from the, the, the competences. Uh, from UNESCO ICT uh, CFT. So we didn't change anything uh, among these competencies. They were just drawn directly from the, from the UNESCO ICT CFT. Then these are, of course, the, the, the units that we, we came up that we sought uh, from the, uh, the basic level. So going to advanced level. So we sort of kind of uh, units that will really help the teachers for more in-depth training, what, what is really needed uh, to support them to continue uh, teaching better and also improving the, the student uh, learning outcome. So as I was saying, uh, uh, the course is, 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 is yet to be uh, rolled out uh, because uh, as I started uh, by saying that we have developed to, so far, we have aligned two uh, training program. Uh, one was the, at the, the level of technology literacy, uh, which is the best one. So that one has been really piloted and also scaled up. And now it is within the, um, uh, even the national program. So uh, that one has really, it is a success stories. Uh, the new teachers, those who are coming from the university that, uh, who are going to teaching level for those that are in pre-services now they have started using the the, the course uh, it's a now a mandatory that they have to go through this course uh, and afterwards they have to sit for for um, the M a certification uh, for them to be to be able to to, to start their uh, teaching professional so they they go through this uh, technology literacy level and then also uh, we have um, because we have done with this so with advanced one so it's this will be also for those that have been trained uh, who are going to do more of um, a bit problem solving uh, for knowledge deepening so they also go through the advanced one so we are very happy that uh, these documents are really uh, helping us even in this time of COVID-19. So uh, since last year, actually, we we have managed to train more than 6,618 6, teacher, teachers uh, from from uh, from uh, using the um, our uh, this uh, the in-service training program uh, that was aligned to UNESCO. So we have seen how it has really affected. Um, uh, it has really helped us even during this COVID. Uh, we teachers who uh, managed to support their student by creating different online uh, assessment. So we have seen how the students have been interacting with the platform doing the assessment and all those uh, like grading, what uh, Andrew Moore was talking about, the model. So they have really been really helpful uh, in this uh, time of crisis of COVID. Uh, so we are hoping uh, that um, 
in coming days so we'll be able also to put our resources for advanced level uh, into the UNESCO um, ICT oil hub uh, because it's something that we are working on because uh, we are also uh, integrating some uh, some of the inclusive um, resources uh, for students with um, uh, disabilities so uh, so we believe also it will help uh, uh, if uh, the, all the materials are put together and we'll be able so to host on the OUR hub. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so as introduced, I, I am from the um, University of the Philippines Open University and uh, we are part of the only national university in my country. Uh, and uh, as such, um, um, in uh, aligned with uh, the name of our university, we're very much an advocate of uh, open educational resources and our involvement um, with um, open educational resources um, uh, uh, it comes along uh, so many streams. And uh, that's why uh, for this uh, particular presentation tonight, or to, uh, it's evening here in the Philippines, uh, I will be uh, answering this question, how can the ICT CFP project strengthen the implementation of the different action areas of the UNESCO OER recommendations. So um, next slide, uh, please, Zeynep. Yeah, okay. So um, as uh, we've been discussing, there are three components, there are three major uh, things that uh, uh, we are looking at now. So this is uh, these are the ICT CFT OER project, the one that uh, we are doing. And of course, the competency, the ICT competency framework for teachers and the OER recommendation um, action areas of UNESCO. So uh, if we're going to look at this, uh, the snapshots of these uh, three aspects of, that we are looking at now, um, if we are going to uh, focus first on the ICT CFT OER project, um, of course, we have uh, set this objective in terms of fostering the contextualization of the framework, uh, in terms of providing teacher with the training materials based on open educational resources. So that's actually our goal. And uh, in, in order to facilitate that kind of uh, access, uh, make these uh, materials accessible. So we have the hubs and it was, uh, we have the hub, the OER Commons uh, hub, uh, which was presented earlier by uh, Andrew. And um, of course, uh, it is also our objective under uh, the ICT CFT OER project to support the capacity building for the ministries, ministries of education, uh, teachers, um, and all those uh, who are involved in um, providing academic training. And if we are going to look at the context of the capability building and the uh, uh, basis for the production of OERs, then we can look at the different levels, different um, um, aspects of the ICT competency framework. So this, this, um, this different levels uh, from understanding ICT in education uh, and the different, the depth by which we want to provide those uh, competencies, uh, these are embedded in this uh, framework. And if we're going to look at the OER um, recommendation action areas, um, and it was presented earlier by Zeynep, uh, there are five um, of these action areas. So uh, let's take a closer look at how, how we can um, really address um, these action areas in, what, in the things that we are doing through our ICT CFT OER project. So next slide, please, uh, Zeynep. Okay, so uh, I would also like to present in my, in my um, discussion, um, I will also be sharing what we are doing in the Philippines so that we can really find this uh, relationship between uh, or among these uh, three um, um, aspects. So in the Philippines, uh, we produce open educational resources, which we are, use, uh, which we are using uh, in our capability building or training uh, programs so that we can achieve the different competencies articulated in the framework, in the ICT CFT. Uh, and in so doing, in so doing, we are now increasing the awareness about open educational resources because what we are actually using are the open educational resources that we have produced. We have provided the template on what open educational resources are, and somehow we are modeling through these programs, through these training initiatives, we are modeling the use of OERs, that just showing them examples of OERs, but modeling, modeling how these OERs can be used. Um, can be created, can be used, can be reused, and can be shared. Uh, so uh, this particular aspect, this particular move in terms of using OERs 
um, in capability building initiatives can address the action area number one. Next slide, please, Zainep. Okay. Um, the OERs that we produce uh, were included at the OERs.org hub, uh, which was, uh, yes, uh, presented by uh, Andrew earlier. So um, by exposing um, or by uh, produce, by integrating these OERs in the oercommons.org hub and using them in our capability building initiatives or programs, we are also exposing the training participants to other open educational resources that other um, organizations have produced. Um, it was shown earlier the many countries that have contributed to the hub and in using and directing our training participants to, the, to those OERs in the hub, then we are also exposing them to these different OERs. We motivate them because they have seen uh, how other organizations, how other countries are doing uh, these OERs, using them, and the different areas um, that are being focused on by these OERs. So we are motivating our training participants to create, contextualize uh, the existing OERs, including the translation uh, of those OERs, and share them through also to the hub or to the platform because um, we in, 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 in directing them to the to the hub we are also showing them that this is a platform for them um, to share if they have developed their own open educational resources and in the same way uh, through the hub we are linking the training participants we are linking our teachers our uh, the ministry our people from the ministry of education we are linking them to other oer producers and in in, in the process encourage uh, uh, networking and collaboration so this particular aspect um address uh, action areas number one number three and number five uh, next slide please Okay, so the oercommons.org hub, uh, it also provides easy access to a wide range of quality OERs. The, the OERs that are there uh, have been vetted um, by, the, um, um, by the management uh, of the hub. And uh, therefore, by, uh, because it is, they are quality materials, then uh, we can uh, ensure the continuous use and improvement. Since we are also, part of the training is uh, also, um, um, uh, encouraging them, encouraging the training participants, encouraging the teachers to also improve um, on what are already there. Uh, and not just continue using, but also improve what are already there and sharing uh, those materials as well as OER. So uh, improvement, adaptation or contextualization, and continue sharing among users and creators of uh, OER. So this particular uh, initiative can address action areas number three and number four. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so um, the one aspect of capability building is the competency on undertaking or understanding ICT and education. That's the first level uh, in our competency. So, uh, and this covers policy awareness. In so doing, in our training and in looking at the different policies which address um, the ICT, especially in, in one's country, uh, we are not only making them aware of the existing policies that, go that govern the integration of ICT and education, but um, the, the, the higher level of competency uh, also um, motiv motivates them, motivates them to provide policy recommendations or uh, create the culture wherein policy innovation would be welcome. So uh, especially since one target sector in the capability building initiatives of our uh, uh, project are those from the ministries of education who can really provide policy recommendations with regard to OERs. And this particular uh, initiative can address action area number three uh, or number two in our OER recommendation. Next slide, please. Okay, so, um, and when we talk of capability building uh, for the ICT CFT OER project, the things that we are covering, uh, we are focusing on the effective use of ICT, the digital literacy, uh, which we can say uh, encompasses, I mean, uh, the professional practice, uh, the development and use of OERs and all these things, because the digital literacy is basic, basic to the use, basic to the development, to the awareness, and to the sharing of uh, open educational resources. And these things um, will, or this particular aspect of the um, uh, OER project, the one that we are doing, can address all the action areas in the OER recommendation. So next slide, please. 
Okay. So, and then when we look at all these things, the combination, the, inter, the interrelation um, among these three, uh, the ones that we are doing for our OER project uh, and directing it to the development of the, of the different competencies among our teachers, especially in the digital literacy. Earlier, Vincent mentioned that uh, focusing on the uh, training um, uh, initiatives, training programs became really necessary during the time of COVID-19 pandemic. And it, it was really our, uh, the OERs, this uh, framework really became our lifesaver during the time of COVID-19 pandemic. We use the OERs that we have developed to train our teachers to develop the different levels of uh, competency, ICT competencies. We use the hub uh, to, to direct them uh, to the different um, OERs in the different subject areas. So the different teachers teaching different subject areas can already get resources from the hub. And at the same time, we are also uh, already working on the different action areas provided for in the OER recommendation. And if we continue doing this, we are looking at our OER uh, Commons uh, hub as the link, as the bridge uh, to, link, to link all these three uh, initiatives. And uh, we are looking at this interrelation as our um, jumping board towards the university of the future, which I think we should all be looking or considering now um, uh, even now that we are still uh, battling against the pandemic um, and uh, looking uh, towards what will be the future of education after the COVID-19 pandemic. So I think this is my last slide. Uh, can I check the next slide? Yeah, okay, thank you very much. So uh, if you have questions, then um, I'll be willing to answer them after. Thank you very much. I'm here to talk to you all today about the hub which has been touched on by all of our presenters which is exciting to see um so the hub that was developed for the ict cft project with unesco is housed on oer commons um, here is oer commons and you can access this yourselves if you whether you have an account there or not um, you can go all the way to the hub you do that by going clicking hubs at the top see all hubs and then scrolling down to the UNESCO hub here. So I just wanted to take some time to walk you through um, what is here, what you'll find here. We've had some wonderful deep dives into specific projects. And as Melinda mentioned, this is the, the bridge that ties them all together. So on the I UNESCO ICT hub, you can learn specifically about the project here and why this hub was created as a place to make all of the wonderful resources that have been created as part of this work um, available to folks around the world. Um, the first section here really is a video from UNESCO outlining the framework for teachers. It's available in English and French and Arabic, going into more details about the, the framework. We've also got a number of um, case study videos here available for folks to watch to learn more about the specific uh, use cases here for the project. But really when you get down a little further on the page here to the ICT CFT aligned resources, this is something that Andrew showed in his presentation. And this is a nice overview of the entire framework. You can see the different um, areas of focus and the levels across the top, knowledge acquisition, deepening, and creation. And if you click into any of these, you'll see a collection of OER resources that have been aligned to that specific part of the framework. So this, these resources are all part of the knowledge application work, and you can see, uh, see them all through that lens. So these are aggregated across all of the different partners and the things that they have provided and shared on the hub. You can do that with each area of the competency. Scrolling further down here, once you get past all of these wonderful resource collections, you can begin to see specific work that countries have done um, and the resources that they have shared back. So we heard from Vincent in Rwanda. We can go to the Rwanda group here and see the 14 resources that they have shared. And then if you go in to look at them, you can learn more about this specific unit of study. For example, you can see the framework alignment here, and then you can go straight to the resource. 
if you are someone who is using Google Classroom for any reason that this would that this would be something you'd want to add to that, you can do that as well. You can share these out on different social media uh, avenues or you can go straight into the resource. And here we have unit eight, ICT and policy. So I'll go back to OER Commons and back to the hub. So further down, um, after you get past the groups, you, again, I encourage you to go and um, explore the work that has been done by all of these different adopters of the framework. Um, you can see here the resources that Melinda from the Philippines has shared with their project. Um, there's just a wealth of materials here available to be remixed, to build upon, and to recontextualize for each of your different, uh, different regions and needs. Um, further down the page, we've got some folks who are, are interested in joining the project. So they too have been set up with groups on this hub where they can begin sharing resources. Um, these are all available too for anyone who comes to OER Commons. We've also developed some interest groups in hopes of encouraging uh, members of this project to share some best practices and um, approaches to the work that they may have, have uh, learned through the process of developing these resources. Down here toward the bottom of the page, we have some specific resource collections, some focusing on the ICT toolkit, and then others really more looking specifically at OER and open licensing. So as, uh, as you may have, have figured out, um, OER Commons is a broad digital library for, for the global digital library of open educational resources that can be used. Um, so it's not, so this ICT work is certainly a component of that, but there are also student-facing resources in K-12 and higher ed available on the, in the library. Um, lastly, we have some over, an overview video. Actually, I think these are all tutorial videos of how to use the hub, um, how to work in groups, how to develop communities. And here at the end, we have the, the toolkit itself, if you're interested in uh, the resources here introducing the ICT toolkit. So um, back to the top, so don't get too dizzy. Um, you can see here, again, you can, you can join a group on this hub or you can access it by going through the hubs link here at the top. Click see all hubs. If you don't wanna scroll down, you can type UNESCO and you will jump right there. So I appreciate any questions, if you have questions related to the uh, ICT CFT framework hub, and uh, thank you for your time today. There is one about um, people who are developing OERs, which could be linked to the ICT CFT in different languages that were shown on the hub. Uh, is it possible to contribute these? Spanish is the example given. And uh, we would strongly, strongly encourage you to share your resources. Um, either alert one of us um, and we will help you get it up into the hub so that other people can, can find them. Uh, and if they're in other languages, even better. Uh, we want to make it as uh, diverse as possible. At the moment, we've got Portuguese, French, Arabic and English. But why stop there? Um, yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Yes. Then I see another one. Um, Where? It, it says, well, some of them are in the chat and some of them are in the uh, Q&A. Um, how is the ICT CFT relevant to the UNESCO OER recommendation? So the, um, an, uh, in our mind, the idea is uh, one of the first recommendations is that we've got to improve teacher competencies. Um, we've got to encourage uh, more teachers to use OERs. And by saying that, we also mean that they must start using technology perhaps more. In many ways, OERs were made possible because of the medium of the internet and uh, digital devices. So they are uh, linked, although they're not mutually exclusive. So I would say then, um, they, they go together very well. I often use the analogy that the ICT, CFT, and OERs are bedfellows. They get on very well. <laughs> <laughs> 
but they're not the same. They are different things. Um, so therefore, you, know, you need to be clear in your mind, where does the OER come in and where does the ICT-CFT fit, et cetera. In the ICT-CFT, especially in version three, there is now a call um, in many of those different levels. You saw the three levels um, for teachers to start um, finding and using OERs and releasing their own materials with an open license, et cetera. So those are some of the objectives uh, linked to the various competencies in the, the latest version of the ICT CFT. So again, there is another area where they come together. Um, um, I think yeah. if I could... Uh, yes. If I could also just add that in Melinda's, uh, Melinda Bandelaria's uh, presentation, Melinda outlined very clearly also the different aspects of the recommendation that are, um, that are actually reinforced through the project that we just, uh, we just, uh, we just did. And it's, it's at many levels. I mean, there's the level of teacher training on how to make OERs, which is the most basic and straight line sort of way. It's also the collaboration aspect of developing OERs together. It's linked, which is linked to the international co cooperation and the sustainability. There's a, it's, it's, it links together in an, it, it's, uh, it's sort of like a, it's knitted together very closely because it's the CFT OER project is talking about developing OER to, to support um, to support teacher training, the teacher training supports OER, and there is a, a sort of meta process of collaboration that's going on and sharing, and uh, and which leads to policy development, and which also leads to um, to sustainability issues. And I think what's illustrated through all this is that OER is a very it's an ecosystem. And it's something that will be that sort of feeds on itself, and it's very. Um, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not just. A, it's part of a larger system, and that's when it becomes really powerful. I don't know if um, what Melinda Boland or Melinda Bandelaria or or Vincent, you'd like to add anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Zainab, thank you very much for that, and uh, I agree with you. Uh, it's an ecosystem by uh, itself. I mean, the three uh, components uh, they they can feed on each other. Uh, one can use the other component um, and uh, support um, the uh, uh, pushing forward the agenda of the OER recommendation, for instance. So uh, I agree with your analogy. So um, yes, thank you very much. Okay, are there any other questions? Um, there's one in French. Um, it says, um, thank you very much for the great project. We have contributed by sharing yeah. our materials in Arabic. Uh, dedicated to Morocco on the Alexo OER Commons group. Uh, we would like to uh, let others use it, but the question of translation into Arabic language so that the OERs suit the Moroccan curriculum, um, uh, most of them are in English, how to make them in a smart system to solve this language problem. Sorry, my, my translation <laughs> is a disaster. But basically, yes, that is both the beauty and the difficultness of having this global group. Uh, on the one hand, um, we've got lots of materials in some languages and then little bits and pieces in other languages and some not at all. So the more we get people together, the more we can help each other translate materials, uh, find um, examples in the language that you're looking for, et cetera. So there are many OERs out there which are not published as such. They're like gray, gray resources. Um, but our team has a feel of, of where they are. So let us know what are your requirements and in what language. Um, and then we can see if we can um, dig around um. and find if you like, I will put my, uh, my uh, in the discussion, I'll put my email. If you would like to keep, get in touch with me after the meeting on the specifics, of, including this issue and the issue of the Spanish, uh, uh, the work done in Spain, please do. And we can see with you how to follow up after. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions? There's one more oh, in the sorry. chat this time. I Oh, and there's another one from Ricardo. He says, is there any standard of quality of OERs? Could universal design for learning be a standard of quality for all these OERs? And I must um, answer that. <laughs> uh, I would be, be a little bit careful of applying a, um, one particular um, set of criteria in terms of determining whether OER is any good or not. 
to be honest, there's no ways you can know what an OER will be used for by another group. So it's almost really that the quality assurance needs to be done by the user rather than by the person who is contributing the resource. UDL cool. criteria are brilliant, but they are very stringent as well. So I would say um, that is something that the person who is using the OER should then apply on top or put on the level on top of the OER to make it uh, more accessible. Go sync, yeah. Yeah. If I could add also that in in the ICT um, in the ICT recommendate I'm sorry the OER recommendation they there is a part on quality and quality criteria and one of the issues that has been done is that open educational resources are educational resources so they must follow the same they must be of the same quality as any other educational resource and what's been found in many of the countries and the institutions that are part of this project is that they put them through this exactly same uh, quality assurance process that other resources go through and in terms of universal design for learning it's been uh, discussed in term it's it relates to the recommendation also because there's a call to have accessible uh, OER so it's uh, it's it's not the quality assurance issue isn't as much as for the accessibility issue that the UP has discussed um, would anybody else on the panel have anything to add yeah, Hi, this uh, is Mindy. Oh. Uh, perhaps okay. Vincent first. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, there is a question in the chat room. Uh, it says, what are the main challenges in the contextualization of ICT safety in Africa, especially in Rwanda? Uh, uh, yeah. In Rwanda, actually, um, if you look at our, our past experience in implementing ICT safety, uh, there are, mostly there are two areas where we found uh, uh, ICT safety challenging. So one area um, I can say is uh, area of ICT and policy area. So uh, where you find most of the, the, the teachers were not uh, actually exposed um, to some of the uh, national or, or regional policies in terms of ICT in education. So you find uh, mostly in advocacy, uh, the ICT in education policy in our countries or teachers are not actually familiar because uh, most of the time it is uh, on the government level. So you find disseminating it on the school level has been really uh, challenging. So you find most of the teachers are really concerned on how the curriculum is being implemented, but they were really uh, less exposed to these national or region policies on ICT in education. Even the uh, UNESCO ICT safety, these competences, this uh, international framework. So you find that our teachers were not really exposed on that. So that one, we really find it uh, very challenging because we are asking them uh, some of the uh, national or international um, policies, how they are affected their classroom practices. So we find that their teachers really find it very um, challenging because they were not exposed. So another area that I can say is uh, ICT to support assessment. So in terms of assessment, you know, um, one of the features in uh, UNESCO ICT safety version three, there is a part for um, uh, assessment. So um, uh, you find the teachers really find some they are really reluctant to find some of the tools that probably they can use in, uh, let's say, informative assessment or support the learning. So you find that this part of um, supporting the assessment was really uh, something that the teachers were not really familiar how to differentiate those supporting, uh, supportive tools that would really help them uh, during the, the classroom um, uh, formative assessment, because when you're teaching, uh, you know, there is this uh, ongoing assessment. So uh, deciding which tools to use was really a challenging, but as you keep on uh, training, um, uh, getting exposed to these uh, different ICT tools, they get familiar and uh, they are able now to find out uh, what tools that, that are really uh, suit for them uh, in their specific subjects. So that's what I can say, uh, two areas that we really find um, mostly challenging when we are implementing ICT safety. Thank you. Thank you. I think Melinda, you had Melinda Bandelaria, I think you were going to say something also just before on uh, universal design. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, same. Thank you very much. Uh, I actually already typed. Um, I already typed my answer uh, to the question and answer box, and I said that uh, yes, I, I I just agreed with your point uh, that uh, um, integrating the UDL features in the OERs can make them accessible. But uh, there are also accept, uh, some acceptable uh, parameters for quality when it comes to open educational resources. And as uh, what Andrew has mentioned. Um, uh, it's up to the user to really apply uh, those uh, different uh, parameters. But I, for me, I also would like to look at the openness. Being um, being able to or having the confidence to share those materials um, can already be one aspect or, or or assurance of quality because you will not be sharing something that you are not uh, sure of the quality of the content. So uh, being open, uh, being open to peer review, peer evaluation is for me one measure of quality when it comes to OERs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melinda. I think there is one more question I saw in the chat. Y aura-t-il un projet futur pour un système intelligent de traduction automatique des règles selon la langue de... How about using automatic translation in the future? Now, this is an ambitious question. Well, there are uh, pilot systems with translation systems, and there's a test being conducted at the moment, which is being done by Category 2 Center of UNESCO in Slovenia, Isfagon, and it's a pilot uh, a project on automatic uh, translation that might be used. Uh, but it's obviously it's an area that requires a lot of work. And of course, uh, we know that automatic translation is being developed and is being developed very fast. And we'll have to see what happens. I think our time is up. I'd like to thank you very much for joining in this discussion. And I'd like to thank our panelists again. Uh, Andrew Moore from OER Africa, uh, Melinda Bandeleria from ISCME, Melinda Boland, I'm oh, sorry, Melinda <laughs> Bandeleria from the uh -huh. University of Philippines and Melinda Boland from uh, ISCME and from OER Commons and of course Vincent Nierga from the Red Rwanda Education Board and I'd like to thank the technicians and the um, and the uh, and the interpreters for their inputs, and I'd like to thank you for taking your precious time to join us today to in to participate in this discussion. We greatly appreciated your inputs. We appreciated also that uh, you would take your time on this busy schedule to join a meeting and to share with us uh, your your questions and your points. And uh, we will be organizing future webinars and we'll send it out through the Dynamic Coalition information channels. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much.